I always set up my Mac for maximum productivity. Here are all the apps, extensions, and features I use on my MacBook Pro on a daily basis to be as productive and efficient with my work as possible. All right, the first app that I like to use is called Dropover. And basically what this does is it creates this little shelf that you can kind of put files or anything on while you're navigating and moving them around. So let me just show you how it works. Basically, let's say I have all these B-roll files that I want to move to another folder. Now, one way that you could normally do it is you know, select the files, then maybe you have to open up a second window, go over to that folder, drag them over just like this. That works obviously, but like it's a little clunky. So with drop over, what you can do, I can just select it, press a little shortcut, and then it opens up this shelf and I can just place the files here. And then in that same window, I can just quickly navigate to the folder that I want to move them to and drag them in just like that right off of that shelf. It also has some other cool features. So let's say you select a file, you can also shake to uh, have the shelf appear. You can drag it onto this little lightning bolt and that'll quickly sh give you a few different options. So let's say I wanted to airdrop this to my phone. I could quickly just drop it on the airdrop. I could put it into messages and send a, a text message quickly to someone. So it's just a little minor quality of life difference that makes navigating files and organizing things a lot easier. The next app that I use on my MacBook is a classic Mac productivity app. And that of course is Alfred. You probably have heard of this one. It's been around for a while, but Alfred basically replaces the spotlight search system on your MacBook. I don't even know how to get to that anymore because I've like disabled it, I think. So how this works is basically you set a keyboard shortcut minus command space, and this opens up this little spotlight window. And you can type things into here like apps. So I can open up my calendar. I can open up Todoist. I can open up uh, Final Cut Pro. And you can just very quickly open up a new app. I think like what most people usually do is they take their mouse and they come down to their dock here, they look for the app, they find, okay, then they click it and then it opens and that just takes forever. Now that might not seem like a big deal, like it's just a couple other seconds, but when you're constantly, you know, opening new apps and stuff, um, navigating your computer, if you use it a lot for work, then that little few seconds really starts to add up and saves you a lot of time in the long run. And one thing that I like to do is I set up a few different hotkeys. And so these basically allow me to do a key command and really you can do anything, but I like to just have it open open up certain apps that I use a lot. So I have like control command C just opens up Chrome real quick. I have control command T opens up my Todoist, control command W opens up my calendar and I can just very quickly open up apps just with keyboard shortcuts. And so in general, keyboard shortcuts are way faster than using the mouse. And that's one of the great things of Alfred. And honestly, I sort of just use Alfred for its basic functions like this. I know you can go really deep and have it do lots of other fancy stuff that I'm not familiar with. If you guys know any helpful Alfred shortcuts, uh, let me know uh, in the comments. Whenever I use someone else's computer and they don't have Alfred, it's like, I don't even know what to do. I don't even know like how to find stuff. I gotta go scroll down to the dock, takes hours. The next app that is another must have for me is is called Better Snap Tool. And what this does is it allows you to quickly resize windows. So normally in Mac OS, you can kind of hold on the green little window expander thing and you can do like left side of screen then you can select another window, right side of screen. And that works, that's fine, but it's still a little clunky and you have to like exit full screen and stuff. What Better Snap Tool does is it allows you to set some keyboard shortcuts that basically let you quickly resize the windows. I can move it to the left. I can easily move it to the right. I can put it in the corners. And if you have another monitor, I don't have mine hooked up right now, but you can set a key command to quickly move one window to your other secondary monitor. But yeah, so this is really nice. I can just quickly resize windows like this. I have Chrome open. I have, say I want my calendar up here and then I want this up here and I want, you know, Spotify uh, down here. I can just move this all around and go crazy. And it's just way faster to resize windows and keep your sort of screen all organized. Next up, we have Google Drive. And that is the main application that I use to back up my files to the cloud. I've still been struggling to find the perfect file backup system that works well with um, Apple products. But for now, I've been using Google Drive mainly because I use my university account from when I was in college and they gave us like unlimited storage. I don't know if, if you're in college and and you have like a school email that's associated with Google, it's like a Gmail, you might have unlimited storage. So I would definitely, you know, set that up and take advantage of that. So that's basically the main reason I use Google Drive. As you can see, I have like 9.05 terabytes backed up here. So I have like all my YouTube videos and things backed up and hopefully I never lose access to this, uh, fingers crossed. But one nice thing about Google Drive is it kind of creates this folder in your finder window. And so like I have my B-roll library uploaded to Google Drive. And so all of these, 
these files here aren't actually on my MacBook, they're saved to the cloud, but I can still open them and view them on my computer here. And let's say I'm editing a video in Final Cut Pro. What I can do is I can come to my B-roll library, which has you know loads of videos in here, so it's taking up a lot of storage, but it's all on the cloud. I can select the video that I wanna use in editing. Let's see, I could even use my drop over and drag it just straight into Final Cut Pro. And this is basically dragging straight from Google Drive more or less. And I don't have to worry about you know downloading the video file to my computer and then uploading it to Final Cut Pro. I can just go straight from the cloud, which is pretty nice. Next up, we have Apple Notes. And that is my main sort of note-taking app that I've been using lately. And so I talked about this in my Simple Productivity System video that I posted a couple weeks ago. I'm sort of following Tiago Forte's system for organizing notes. So I've got projects in here, areas, different areas of my life, YouTube, health, education, minimalism, relationships, resources and stuff. And I really like Apple Notes. It gets the job done. It's simple. There's this one productivity meme that was going out basically saying how Apple Notes is, is the best. And that kind of resonated with me. And so now I've been using Apple Notes and they've been updating it gradually with some good updates. Now they've got like links and stuff you can do, which are pretty nice. Maybe I'll do a full video on Apple Notes if you guys want to see that. But simple, gets the job done and is my main note-taking app. Next up, I like to use Apple Calendar on my Mac. Pretty self-explanatory. Just again, like Apple Notes, simple, gets the job done. No bells and whistles. As you can see, I've got a bunch of you know, time blocks on here and I've got a whole system kind of how I use this in conjunction with my to-do list app. If you want to learn more about that, definitely watch that video on my channel on my simple system for productivity and time management. And I go more in depth on how I use calendar in conjunction with a to-do list app. Next up, we've got Todoist. And this has been my main to-do list or task manager app of choice on my MacBook. And I like Todoist because it's got some pretty good features. It seems like the developer team, you know, is pretty proactive about updating it, but it's also, you know, still fairly simple, not too distracting with random bells and whistles and gets the job done so that I can focus most of my time on on actually doing work rather than just planning what to do. And right now I've got it set up kind of similar to my calendar. You can see with like these main categories in my life, YouTube, health, education, discipline, relationships. And so I've kind of organized my tasks in there and then I like to prioritize them depending on, you know, if it's a really important thing that I want to do that day or if it's, you know, somewhat important or if it's like not super urgent. Um, but I get more to that in my productivity system video. So I've really been liking Todoist and the Mac app is great. It also has a nice shortcut feature where you just press a command and it opens up a little window. Kind of like with Alfred, I have mine set as option space and it opens this up. I can quickly add a task and then you can, you know, set the date you want to do it, tags, priority, whatever you need to do and press enter and it'll go straight to your inbox. And what's nice is you don't even have to have the app open to activate that shortcut. I can just be, you know, working on my computer, doing uh, random stuff. And let's say I remember that I need to do something. I can quickly just do the shortcut, type out the task and add it to my inbox just like that, get back to work. Later, when I come back and do my daily review, I can go to my inbox and go through all the tasks that I have. Another app that I've been exploring more recently is Apple Reminders. I don't use it too much right now. I have set up like my categories just because I was testing out the new features, but I mainly use it for the grocery list feature, which is pretty nice. You can type in a grocery and it'll automatically sort it. As you can see, it'll put like, you know, in the meats, dairies, spices, whatever. And so that just makes it very easy when shopping. But it does seem like Apple made some nice updates to it recently. So I might start exploring it more for like my normal to-do list um, type of stuff, but I'll keep you guys updated on that. And one feature of Apple Reminders that I like that they added with Mac OS Sonoma is one, the ability to have widgets on your home screen, but then also the interactive widgets. As you can see, this is kind of my reminders widget and I have a task on it. Let's say I have film YouTube video. And once I do that, I can just click straight on the widget and check it off without having to, you know, open up the app and stuff. I've also been testing out the widgets for other apps too. So as you can see on my desktop, I've got the widget app for my calendar, for my strong workouts app, kind of see how many workouts I've been doing, weather, notes, reminders, as I said, I got the Duolingo one here. Some quotes from Readwise, which is pretty nice. I've also got my aura ring widget that kind of shows when I should be going to bed. To be honest, I haven't really found myself looking at the widgets on my desktop that often, but I think I just need to remember that they're there and get used to it because there is definitely some helpful, useful information on them. Next up, we've got Chrome, and that has been my main web browser of choice. I would like to use Safari because I've heard it's generally faster and I'm an Apple fanboy, but the main thing that's holding me back is the lack of extensions in Safari, whereas Chrome has a pretty good selection 
of extensions that you can use. And so there's a couple extensions that I like to use that really helps me be more productive when I'm using YouTube in particular, because as you probably know, you can watch a lot of educational good videos on YouTube, but you can also get distracted very easily. And so one of the extensions basically blocks out my entire YouTube home screen. So like normally you'd see all those recommendations and stuff, you know, thumbnails trying to get your attention. But with this extension, it hides all of that. And also if you click on a video, it'll hide all the recommendations on the side. So you can just focus on the video that you're watching and be more intentional with how you spend your time on YouTube. The other extension is actually the Readwise extension. So I've been using this app called Readwise Reader lately. It's a new app that they're offering. And basically it's like a glorified watch later kind of website or app. And so now I'll pretty much only watch my YouTube videos through this Readwise app. So what this looks like is let's say I'm scrolling through YouTube and I see a video that I wanna watch. It seems pretty good. Instead of just watching it right then and there and getting distracted from whatever I need to do, I'll right click it and save link to reader. Or if you click on the video, you can click on the little Readwise extension icon here and that will basically save it to reader and then you can click open in reader later and it'll open up the video in this nice format we even have the transcript here some information about the video and you can watch it right here in readwise reader and so i really like that no i'm not sponsored by readwise i have like less than a thousand subscribers so that's how you know that the information i talk about in these videos is legit and what i actually like to do but readwise if you are watching and want to sponsor me definitely let me know next up we've got the app clean shot and i can't show you the actual app right now because i'm actually using it to record my computer screen, but I'll show you their website. It's basically like a much cleaner kind of upgraded way of taking screenshots or screen recordings. You can do all these cool things like scrolling screenshots. So you can like take a screenshot of the entire page if you want. You can record your screen, like I said, and you can even have like your webcam picture shown on the screen recording. It's kind of like Loom if you've heard of that, but I feel like a little cleaner and better in my opinion. Yeah, so I would definitely recommend that if you take a lot of screenshots or like recording your screen for YouTube videos or anything like that. And then another app that I like to use is just the uh, Sticky Notes app. This is just a regular Apple app, but I feel like it's not really talked about much, but it's pretty nice. It basically works like Sticky Notes, but on your computer, obviously. I like to use this to just write out goals, as you can see, or anything that I'm trying to remember and keep in mind. And you can do nice things like have it stay like actually stuck to your window even if you open up other windows so as you can see like i can just put this in the corner and if i'm doing other stuff like it's always going to be there it's not going to get lost away and you can save different sticky notes you can make it translucent so it kind of goes in the background a little bit but yeah it's pretty nice and simple and an underrated app in my opinion and it's pretty nice for video calls too because let's say you have to take some notes or remember something that you need to say in the call maybe for an interview or something you can write all your notes on your sticky drag it like right under the webcam and then you can like keep looking at the webcam as you're talking and also read your notes at the same time. Little cheat code. And another feature that helps me stay productive is the focus mode feature. And this really just mirrors what's on my iPhone and I get the same benefits of sort of filtering notifications based on my focus mode like I do on my iPhone. So I have different modes based on sort of different activities that I do, you know, deep work, sort of flow state. I would have most notifications get turned off when I activate this. Relax mode, I would start getting, you know, more notifications from people. Compared to the Mac, it's way easier for me to get distracted on my iPhone, but of course, or smartphones have become an essential part of our lives. The key is to make them work for you, not against you. Click this video to see how I set up my iPhone for maximum productivity. As always, do something today that your future self would thank you for.